let us pray father in the name of jesus christ i'm here to minister your word father speak through me in the name of jesus christ touch every heart everyone here oh god in the name of jesus let your word lead us to god to do exploit for you O oh god in the name of jesus we bless you in jesus name amen amen praise the lord the last time i preach on having god consciousness or having the mind of god having the mind of god this morning my message i have entitled it touching god touching god touching god we have to as i'm standing here i'm standing on christ to minister his word amen some of the things that we do as christians we don't understand it you see we don't understand even when you are going to the malam the jujuman hey, hey, remove your standards before you come here but when we come here and we stand on the altar we see it just like that it's the power of god amen and when you come and you touch it you have to believe it amen so to this morning I'm already in the <laughs> revival, so I was going to say tonight because my mind always is on the revival now. Amen. This morning, let's turn our Bible to Luke 8, 43 to 48. Luke 8, 43 to 48 talks about a woman who touched the garment. Oh, say, the Bible say, a woman in a crowd has suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding and she could find no cure please continue she could find no cure who touched me no 40, 40 44 came came up behind jesus she touched the the firming of his robe immediately the bleeding stopped 45 who touched me jesus asked everyone denied it and peter said master this whole crowd is pressing up against you but jesus said someone deliberately touched me for i've no some someone deliberately touched me 46 again S someone deliberately touched me for i felt i felt that power as virtue has left me when the woman realized that she could not stay hiding she began to tremble and fell her knees before him the whole crowd heard her explaining why she why she had touched him and that she has been immediately healed amen explaining why because jesus want them to, that jesus know because when the woman purpose in his, in her heart jesus has already seen it but when he touched jesus jesus knew that something has happened you see this morning i'm talking of faith my message is touching jesus is about faith only our faith that we can touch god with with faith the woman has suffered for 12 years now you want to she want to meet jesus and the crowd was so much that she cannot meet him one-on-one on one and sit down and say, boss, this is my situation, so that if you can heal me. So she decides to herself, even when I touch her garment, when I touch her garment, I will be healed. If I can't get the opportunity, I just want to touch her garment. And I believe, that's what the woman purpose in her, and I believe even when I touch her garment, I will be healed. And when he touch it, it happens. And Jesus wants him her to share her testimony like she can live and know that somebody has received healing but she wants her to to share her testimony to educate the people around amen when we come to church we have to touch god 
we have to touch God. It is touching. It is like electricity. Lord, our brother was saying, if you didn't connect something to the power, you won't get the power. But thank God when he connects, but God save him. Amen. You see, we have Joe read about first uh, Genesis chapter one. It said God created the world, and the world was without form, and darkness has covered the surface of the world. And God, God is imagining a darkness. So, so then, if there is darkness, there, there can be something that can be light. And God said, "Let there be light." So when he pronounced it, the light came, and he said, "Oh." Now he saw that, eh, okay, this is darkness and this is also light. And this is also nice. And then it's good. And so God saw that it was good. And he said, he made it day. And the night, he make, the darkness, he, make, he made it night. Hallelujah. So it is about faith. Our Christian life is all about faith. There, there is three things we need as Christians. Three things we need as Christians. Three things we need as Christians. Believing in God. Believing in God. It, because it's true believing that you confess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior and you are baptized and re receive Holy Ghost baptism. It's like when I was a young, born again Christian, I was not believing in tongue speaking. So I've been in church, so many people, pastors are laying hands on me and this language I don't understand I have to speak it and because I don't believe it how come that so one day I went to all night and I said no if it's true God is God who touched people to speak this language then I want to experience God I went to all night and I said today I want to experience God I want also to speak the tongues and also I don't believe in pastors touching somebody and pushing him down that's the gift i'm praying that god should give me so that when i want to pray for you i stand here joe receive it then joe himself will fall now to that one to when they come they say he's juju he's using juju and i will do some pastors who they will step on your foot and push you receive it sometimes you go and then you fall down so sometimes when i'm going to meet the pastor i stand like this so that day god knows my heart and my attitude so we're praying, it was Reverend or Warren. He just come and receive it. He just stood on this, receive it. And I saw myself like a paper flying in the air and I found myself on the ground. I saw myself like a paper. That's what I saw. It's like, we be a mouse, we be a banana mouse, we be a banana mouse, we be a banana mouse, sorry, I'm going to make a banana Hallelujah. So it is that faith that I moved to the all night with it. Say, 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 so when the pastor said, hey, I'm on I remember stuck in the garden school park. School. So I stood like this. So I mean, I'm so from the Nesabe coming. I mean, my name is which I'm trusting. But he said, receive it. So one, one thing is believing. Then the next is faith. Faith and today I will dwell mostly on faith. 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 What is faith? What is faith? As Christians, we are here and everybody have plans. Everybody have goals. Everybody have vision. Everybody want to do something. My main aim is to make heaven. That is number one. My main aim is to make heaven. So what is faith? Faith is Bible put it, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of it not seen. That's how the Bible has said. But if I'm explaining it, then the Bible is saying that faith is you deciding on something that you want. You don't have money. You don't have it. But you want it. And standing on the word of God to take that thing. That is faith. Faith is you Deciding on something that you want, maybe something that you need. Your pastors don't know, your brothers don't know, your family don't know, even sometimes your wife don't know, but you need it. And dwelling on the word of God, depending and believing God that yes, this thing, I need it. And the word of God says yes, you can take it. So dwelling on it and for you to get it. Amen. When we look at Luke 18. 
There was a widow. There, there was a widow who went to a wicked judge to plead that the judge would help her to so that the, 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 the things that the husband has acquired, they will not take it from her. Because in the olden days, when you are a widow, you don't have a son, everything that your husband will get, they will take it from you and give it to someone who have a son. So when he went to the judge, he has been there several times, and this judge doesn't care about this woman. But the woman continued to go to the judge till the judge decided, ah, even I, I don't fear God and I don't fear any man, but this woman is troubling me. Why not grant her a desire for her to live so that I'll have my peace? And he did it for her. That's the woman's face. You know that as long as he will be there, he will fall, chase the judge out, the judge grant her her heart desire. Jesus spoke about a certain woman who need healing and he went to Jesus and Jesus insulted her. He said, we don't give the food of the royals to the dogs. We don't give the food of the royals to the dogs. And the woman said, even when the royals eat and there's crumbs, the dogs also can't take it. Jesus said, hey, he's insulting you over somebody. He said, ah, also we pa. Let's say today we have come to Papa and he said, we don't give the food of the royals, the, uh, the prevailing, the dead land people, to the dogs. He said, oh, so we dog. He's calling me dog. I will leave and go. This church I stop. Ah, church boy. But he said, well, even when the royals eat, the dogs eat the crumbs. Jesus, I haven't seen this faith before. You see, faith is a tenacity. You purpose in your heart, come what may. Come what may. There are challenges that we face as Christians. So many things. You read the Bible and there's some time uh, you go home and things are dry. Things are challenges here and there. Sometimes your head is bombarded with challenges. Some of the people will ask me, I feel they will be able to say, I don't know how. I'm saying, no, 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 how no, yeah, then. The Bible say that any challenges that you cannot go through, God say he will not bring it to you. So me, I believe that when the challenge comes, I know I have won already. It's like there was a food <laughs> competition, eating competition. And when they were they went, they gave them like starter. So they brought fufu a certain size for them to eat. It's just a starter. Then one guy was able to finish all and was asking for more. Then one the one that they say is champion from the other side couldn't finish even the starter. So the other guy, the woman, <laughs> he said, when he saw the food that they are bringing, so in the umu, in the umu, because he knows that with this food that they have set up there, he can finish all, and they are five in number. He alone can finish the five. So I know that he has won the battle. So Jesus said, there is no challenges that will come to you. Amen. But when you believe that, yes, he has said that there is no challenges that will come to me, that I cannot overcome it. Hallelujah. So we have to stand on faith. 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 What is what then I can see in the town in Christian life is that our faith level is low. The circumstance and the challenges of this world have eaten us up. Your rent, your school fees, your children's school fees, your client, sometimes there is no job and you are always thinking about it. You are always thinking and sometimes when it's like that, you belittle God. You belittle God. Let's exercise our faith in God. Determine what you want, how you want to be, how your life want to be, how your children, you want your children to live. Hallelujah. Sometimes you see your children, you want them to go this way. Then the children are going that way. But you continue to pray. Amen. You continue to pray. Amen. And God will take charge. Sometimes I can see my son is sitting there. I can see he want to go this way. And I want him to go this way. But he will be stubborn. And I love Then I say, God, touch him. Hallelujah. God, touch him. God touch him. God touch him. Because sometimes when you say something, there are some things he doesn't understand. 
but you the father you have been there before so you know this is fire child, child don't go there and say i will go this is that child don't go there but sometimes fathers what we do is we fight with them because they don't understand it when you fight with them they become stubborn because when i was i was a child I was like that i fight with my father every day i don't understand him until he, now that he's dead that i understand, I understand, I understand. this man was helping him amen so we need faith as christians to move on we need faith we need faith then the, the next thing is works and action but i want to dwell more on faith because faith without works is dead that's what the bible says faith without works but now we have to let our faith move the mountain jesus said if you have faith you can tell this mountain to move which means if you believe you can tell this mountain to move if you so wish you can tell this mountain to move and it will move because god has done it for you already he has settled every bell. He has fought every war or every battle for us already. Just we have to move on with faith. Amen. Just we have to move on with faith. I don't know your heart is that somebody who says, oh, I want to do business. I remember one time I, uh, I was planning to do business and I need money. And I went and sit on a big man talking on this thing. The big man is talk, calling on 10 billion billion cities they want to take that 10 billion for me and i was afraid i said I said, hey. because i was thinking of how to pay that 10 billion would your mommy five thousand no i said fifty thousand would your mommy fifty thousand the man was then he went there he said oh he can't get the fifty thousand that i want but they where every place they are offering him 10 um which is 10 billion which is hundred thousand one million Ghana cities. They are offering one, one million Ghana cities. So we talk and talk. We say, so it is fifty thousand that I want. That that one that he can get it out from his own destiny for me. You see, I prayed. I prayed. Twenty thirty. I prayed, and God is giving me the opportunity to take this destiny. I was afraid. Sometimes that, that's how our faith is. Sometimes God is looking for something bigger for you. You are afraid. It's like. Peter, Jesus called him to come and he's walking on the sea all right, but he was afraid and looking at hey, me walking on the sea. So Christians we have to wake up. Papa can preach the gospel to you like, like I'm preaching, but we cannot put that faith, you know, we do the work of faith for you. That work is individual issue. You have to stand based on the word of God and move on believe yourself hallelujah many christians don't believe themselves because we are full of sin full of sin and they are sorry back on not change above from back today we stand up then the next day we are down today we stand up and the next day we are down what i'm afraid most is sin christians are afraid of death christians are afraid of poverty even christians are afraid of witches witches they are toy they are toy in the eyes of god they are like cockroaches you just step on them I mean, when i see cockroach i just step on him on it which is like cockroaches but christians are not afraid of sin what we have to be afraid of number one is sin because it is sin that takes away the covering that is around us it is sin that takes away the covering so when the devil wants you to fall or to destroy you he will first push you push you into sin hallelujah and you will use the things that attracts you some are attracted by food some are attracted by alcohol some are attracted by women some are attracted by money no matter the thing that you want you wish he will push it to you it's like playing draft and you know where you corner you so if you want to walk with god we need faith so without faith it is impossible to please him that's the word of god without faith so without faith, it is impossible to you can't please god 
without faith you can't please god nothing you will do will please god the, the the bible talks about a widow who give her widow's might the little but he gave it with faith it talks about the widow that uh, elijah went and meet that is last this he gave out to the man of god he gave it out based on faith that the man of god preaching you do it for me first and when i eat i will bless you and he did it so faith is all that we need as christians you have believed in in the word of god and you trust god you know that god can do believe and take step amen you see most of the time the devil used death poverty and this thing to block our mind but we have forgot that the one who have the keys to life is our father jehovah god the one who has the keys to poverty is our god the one who have a key to everything that you want is god but the devil bring that challenges to you and you forgot that your father have the capability amen your father have the capability to save you from all these things because he shut your faith your faith to take decisions your faith to move on your faith to stand hallelujah so this morning i'm here to preach you faith 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 that one no one can do it for you you have to do it it's like when you are sick and you you are you have been given a medicine your father your mother your sister your brother cannot take that medicine for you you have to take it yourself every medicine the one who is sick have to take it we can't take it for the, the somebody cannot take it for you amen you touch god with faith through prayer through prayer you touch god with faith through prayer daniel did that daniel they, were, they have asked not to pray but daniel did what stood and pray stood and pray hallelujah there are so many things that we can touch god your prayer can touch god hannah did it sarah did it even hannah hannah pray and the the, the prophet himself hasn't seen that kind of prayer. He said, no, this morning, this lady has taken some alcohol. And he said, I haven't taken alcohol, but it's the spirit of God. I'm crying unto God. Amen. Sometimes you have to wrestle with God. You have to wrestle with God. Like what uh, uh, Jacob did. Hallelujah. That is faith. You have to wrestle, wrestle with God. You have to fight with God. Not fighting that you want, but God, I need this thing. I need that. And you have to stand on it, dwell on it, and take it. You can, you can touch God through worship. Through worship and your obedience to the word of God. And everything that is obedience to his word. You can touch God through worship touching God. You can touch God through worship. Sometimes you can worship God in your room. Not in church. Because sometimes church, uh, the time and this thing, there's time for everything. So church, the baby, you want to go deep, dive deep. And they say it's time. You can't do it. Then they break you halfway. In your room, in your closet, you can touch God with your worship. You can touch God with your prayer. So many people touch God and it was the attaching it was the attaching that bring them to the limelight it was the attaching of god that bring them to the limelight you can you see there is no way that you can move with faith that you will not be noticed amen there is no way that you can you will move with faith that you will not be noticed anybody who moves with faith will be noticed anybody who shadrach meshach they are one example they stood that if our god cannot save us we don't care to die 
because they know that our God, their God, have the power of death. So if He cannot save them, and they were thrown into the fire, but God saved them, Amen. Any time you exercise your faith, any time you exercise your faith, you call for God to come into your intervention. You see, one thing that we have to know that God is not here for crowd. But God is here to see your faith. It's not here that when we come to church, and you, some of the church you go, the numbers are great. But when you sit back and you listen to the history and the story that comes from the church, it's like baller. It's like a big baller. Sometimes people can say, Well, oh, as for church, I won't go to church again. No, it's not good to say that. You have to go to church. So God is there to look at individual. Salvation is individual matter. Salvation is individual matter. You can be with your wife, and the last day rapture, they will pick you and leave one. That's what the Bible says. Salvation is not family matter. So since my father is a pastor, I will also go to heaven. No. Since my mother is a prayer warrior, I will also go to heaven. No. Salvation is individual matter. Salvation is individual matter. The same faith is individual matter. I have passed through so many challenges and by faith I have overcome them all that's what makes me strong you see when you are you are mature and you are exercising and you are doing this thing when you then you are able to pick lift this weight and they give you another weight you are able to lift it and then your faith level or your belief level of yourself is going high but as Christian, as you pass through challenges, one another, one another, when they, this one come, the next day, this one come, the next day, this one come, as you are able to pass through all, that's where your faith stands. Today, we will not, maybe you and I, will, they won't throw us into the fire, like Shadrach, Meshach, but the fire that you are in is your business challenges, your financial challenges, your marital challenges. Sometimes your fire is that you have married for many years and you are not getting a child. Sometimes your fire is that you want to build your house and uh, business cries hard. But you have to push forward. You have to fight on. Amen. You have to push forward. You have to fight on. And exercise your faith. Amen. You have to exercise your faith. You have to exercise your faith. You have to exercise your faith. Hallelujah. There's one. You have to exercise your faith. So, like I said, God is not here looking for people, big crowd. No, he's looking for individual who will have faith in him who trust in him who walk upright in him who believe him because of him you sacrifice yourself you sacrifice yourself to live for god your family center they will tell you oh dear kwasia when him we we jimmy when you my dear this guy because you are you have sacrificed anytime you sacrifice yourself to go for god people will look down on you and they will speak against you but when you come to the lamb light they will try to associate your, themselves with you. God bless you.